some breaking news for you. Good morning, Notre Dame. You're going to want a rain jacket. Notre Dame men's basketball coming out of the East region. And can you get me a gym time? Not only that, it was a shutout, of course. For NDTV, I'm Abby Urban. Good morning, Notre Dame. I'm Grace Aladipo. And I'm Derek Williams. Welcome to Indy Sunrise, where we bring you all the news that is the news across campus. We hope your week here at Notre Dame has been going well. Coming up on the show today, we have a highlight of campus events, a look at weather, and a special story from the field. Up first, we have Megan O'Keefe. Megan has the latest news on what's happening around campus. Megan? Good morning, Irish. My name is Megan O'Keefe, and I'm here at the Hesburgh Library with some exciting new updates about the Grand Reading Room, or should I call it, the Lou and Beth Holtz Family Grand Reading Room. For those of you unfamiliar with the Holtz family, Lou Holtz was the coach of the Fighting Irish football team from the years 1986 through 1996. And him, along with his wife Beth, have made numerous donations to Notre Dame, including the chapels within Breen Phillips, Morrissey, and St. Edwards, along with donating to the Lou and Beth Holtz Family Scholarship. In honor of Beth, who died in June of 2020, Lou Holtz has made another generous donation to completely redesign the Grand Reading Room on the second floor of the Hesburgh Library. This design will have the room spanning two floors instead of one, with an atrium in between. The windows will span both floors to allow lots of natural lighting and offer a view of the dome and basilica of the Sacred Heart, all while promoting an interdisciplinary and collaborative space for students. In Lou Holtz's words, Beth would strongly endorse the fact that Notre Dame students can learn in a wonderful environment. So keep an eye out for construction updates about the Grand Reading Room, and also an eye out for other exciting new projects on our constantly evolving campus. Thank you, Megan, for that insightful and heartfelt take. Yeah, that's going to be a really nice donation to the library. Definitely. Yeah. We now have our feature story being shared by our very own Caitlin McHenry. To you, Caitlin. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Caitlin McHenry. This past Saturday, the Fighting Irish football team had a victory against the Purdue Boilermakers with a final score of 27-13. The flooding of social media posts post-game celebrating this victory was prominent, especially the hashtag IrishWearGreen. But the absence of the Purdue drum was frequently noted. The Purdue Big Bass Drum is an iconic part of the Purdue football game day. It is known for being the world's largest drum, but according to an Indie Star article in 2013, in actuality the drum is only 7 feet 3 inches in diameter and 3 feet 9 inches wide, which is smaller than the University of Texas's Big Bertha, which stands at 8 feet tall 44 inches wide, and University of Missouri's Big Mo, which stands at 9 feet tall 54 inches wide. Regardless, Purdue's drum has been a part of the Purdue game day tradition for 100 years, yet it was absent this past game day here in South Bend. This has not happened on a Boilermaker game day since 1979. You, as well as other fighting Irish and Boilermaker fans, may be wondering why this iconic drum did not make an appearance. After all, the drum was in fact present at the last Purdue Notre Dame football game in 2012, but since then Notre Dame has prohibited their opponent's band from entering the main entrance to Notre Dame Stadium. It turns out that while Purdue's drum is not the largest drum in the world, it is in fact too big for the visitors' entrance into our stadium. I guess with the absence of the drum, the Boilers makers missed a beat and couldn't beat the Fighting Irish that are now 3-0 in their season with their Shamrock Series game and feature on College Game Day this Saturday in Chicago at Soldier Field against the Wisconsin Badgers. Go Irish! Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, we really appreciate you helping to promote that story. Now over to Cesar Sanchez for the weather report. Hey, howdy, hey, I'm Cesar Sanchez, and this is your weather report on Andy Sunrise. Let's take a look at the game day weekend outlook. In the morning, we have mid to 60s. It's going to be partly sunny. In the afternoon, just around game time, it's going to be 70 to 53, so good temps all around. And then in the evening or into Sunday, if you are sticking around in Chicago for the weekend, it'll be 61 to 75. So all around, really great weather in the Chicago. Should be a great game weekend. Hopefully the Irish pull off a victory as well. Now we'll take a look at the seven-day forecast. Here on Thursday, we have rain coming up. It's going to be 57 with a low of 49. 
But after that, it's going to be clear skies all around. If you decide to stay in on this weekend, stay in South Bend, that is, I don't know why you would do that. But if you do, it's going to be 70s all around. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. should be fun. And with that, I've been Cesar Sanchez. This has been your weather report. I'm having a ton of fun up here. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. A rainy week here at Notre Dame. I really should have bought an umbrella last week. <laughs> Looks like we might be able to put away those umbrellas soon, though, and soak up some sun. Yeah. Exciting developments in Notre Dame sports. We have Aiden O'Brien at the desk to share his take. Aiden? What's up, guys? My name is Aiden O'Brien. I'm here with NDTV. As we all know, the best football team in the entire world played on Sunday, and they lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. However, Notre Dame played this weekend, and they won. Go Purdue. Anyways, let's roll right into the highlights from this weekend. This weekend, during one of Penn State's infamous whiteout games where they faced Auburn, Penn State's offensive line dominated and was able to keep Sean Clifford safe and sound in the pocket. On a third and seven early in the game, Clifford's line was able to keep defenders away for over five seconds, allowing him to throw a dime to Keandre Lambert-Smith for the first down. Late in the game, as Auburn tried to rally and put together a game-tying drive, Bo Nix's pass to Shedrick Jackson is caught and then stripped, letting Joey Porter run for a scoop and score, but gets called back, allowing Auburn one more chance to score where they are stopped short on a gritty fourth and goal play, giving Penn State the win 28 to 20. In the Notre Dame versus Purdue game, what even is a Boilermaker? Near the end of the first quarter, Kyle Hamilton makes an amazing stop to change the momentum in the game on a crucial fourth and one, giving the Irish great field position. This is followed by a fourth and three conversion that sends Kyler Williams running 30 yards to the end zone after a bullet from Jack Cohn, wiping out two defenders. Notre Dame's first score of the day puts them up seven to three. Early in the third quarter, Jack Cohn's bomb to Avery Davis puts the Irish up by 11 thanks to his first score of the season. Finally, late game picks by both Kyle Hamilton on a would-be touchdown pass and DJ Brown on a Hail Mary keep the Irish undefeated and looking very strong into their game with Wisconsin this weekend. In the Oklahoma versus Nebraska game, there were four separate kicks that were either blocked or missed entirely. Check out this block extra point that was run back over 100 yards by Pat Fields. Now for the most incredible play this game day, with eight minutes left in the quarter and a fourth and longer convert in order to stay in the game, Adrian Martinez heaves up a prayer and is intercepted with one hand by DJ Graham to seal off the Hoosiers victory. What a catch. Those are some amazing highlights this weekend. Thank you all for watching, and go Irish. That was a pretty good definition of the Boilermakers. <laughs> yeah. I think that fits pretty well. Now, uh, Good luck to all athletes competing this week, especially the Fighting Irish as they take on Wisconsin this weekend, hoping to see another victory for Notre Dame. Now, we're only five weeks into the semester, so there are still some great events happening around Notre Dame. Get those calendars out because we have some awesome opportunities coming up in the next few days. Definitely. Are you looking for some fun and relaxation? The Student Activities Office has you covered. On Friday, SAO is holding a laser tag night at the Stephen Center from 8 p.m. to midnight. Bring out your friends and see which team is victorious. I know I'm going to be there. On Saturday, SAO is also holding a minute to win it game night at Legends from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Free food and great prizes available throughout the whole night. Now this one goes out to all the law students here on campus. On Friday, the Center for Career Development is hosting a Law School Connections Day. Head over to the Duncan Student Center from noon to 3 o'clock p.m. to enjoy coffee with representatives from top law schools. This is open to all undergrad students and is a great opportunity to prepare a competitive law school application. And then, are you interested in the fine arts? You won't want to miss what's happening this Friday in the Performing Arts Center. Emmy, Tony, and Golden Globe nominee Matthew Morrison, Morrison will be featuring songs from his albums and Broadway experience starting at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are only $10, so make sure to check it out. I, I, I'm so excited. I'll be buying a ticket. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, make sure to check out everything Notre Dame has planned for Energy Week Plus. Energy Week Plus runs through the rest of September and offers students a look at sustainability in action. There will be presentations from stakeholders, tours of local energy plants, and even an electric vehicle expo next week. A full schedule of events can be found at energy.nd.edu. Cannot wait. Right, so we now go over to Ashlyn Poppy for today's segment of Women on the Street. Ashlyn? 
Hello Notre Dame, this is Ashlyn Poppy with ND Sunrise. In a recent study, the Notre Dame mascot, the Leprechaun, was voted the fourth most offensive mascot in college football. The university claims that the Fighting Irish embodies the determination of both the Irish people and our university's athletes. With that said, let's go see how current Notre Dame students feel about the Fighting Irish mascot. We're here at the Hesburg Library with an entire group of Notre Dame students. So guys, recently our mascot was voted the fourth most controversial mascot in college football. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel like our mascot is controversial? Uh, absolutely not. I love our mascot. I feel like the mascot's more established more on like grit, like the Irish grit, rather than like the actual Irish person. So even though we're founded by the French, I don't really see how they feel like that's offensive. Go Irish. Not at all. I think he's great. Um, not really. Uh, I, I am partially Irish myself. I, I don't feel like I'm offended. Uh, honestly, fighting Irish uh, really fits the vibe of this school, I would say. So I don't really think it's offensive in any way. I honestly don't think the mascot is offensive. I think it more represents the history of our campus, and it should be represented as like a good thing. Um, I don't think I would like to see it changed. I wouldn't like any change. Uh, no comment. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel like the Fighting Irish mascot is controversial or offensive? Um, I personally think that it's not super offensive because I actually was in my Moreau class and uh, uh, someone was taking us around, to giving us like another tour, and they were telling us that the mascot actually isn't from like Ireland. It's from the Irish people that are in America, and it's not supposed to be offensive in any way. It's literally like based off the Irish people that were in America. So, Do you find our mascot, the Fighting Irish, controversial, and if so, why? I absolutely do not, because the Fighting Irish represents the never-say-die attitude and the grit and determination of Notre Dame athletics. I couldn't have said it better myself. If our mascot were to be changed, what would we change it to and why? Um, if I were to change it, I would change it to the dome because everybody loves the dome. And, you know, there's a lot of schools that don't have, like, physical mascots. So, like, you could just have it as be an object that represents something greater than... What would our new cheer be, then? Oh, I don't know. Father Jenkins. Um, something that would keep the green theme. That's tough. As a Cleveland Guardians fan, uh, I did just have my team name uh, changed. And honestly, if we just went with the Notre Dame College football team I, I think that would be the best possible name um we can't as simple I as think that. That, yes there is no answer to that question no. any day now the fighting almonds <laughs> but that would probably offend people that don't like nuts so maybe we couldn't do that uh the peaceful irish the pacifist Irish. You heard it here first. Notre Dame students are proud to be the fighting Irish. This is Ashlyn Poppy with ND Sunrise. Go Irish. Oh, those are some interesting new names that we heard there. Yeah, I mean, fighting almonds, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely glad to hear some opinions, though, from students around campus. Thank you, Ashlyn. Yeah, and I think whatever it is, you know, the spirit of Notre Dame definitely lives on. So maybe the new mascots or the old mascot will live. Um, and that's all for today's episode of an ND Sunrise. Catch our episodes on Tuesday and Thursday mornings in Duncan Student Center from 9 to 11 a.m. And if you happen to miss out, don't worry. You can also watch our episodes on the ND TV YouTube page under the ND Sunrise playlist. Make sure to follow us at, at Notre Dame Television on Instagram and Notre Dame TV on Twitter and Notre Dame Television on YouTube to stay updated on all of our latest work. Did you like what you saw? Want to get involved with studio production? Look no further. NDTV is a student-led program here on campus. Come visit our studio on the second floor of Duncan Student Center or shoot us an email at ndtv at nd.edu. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Grace Oladipo. And I'm Derek Williams. From all of us here in the studio, we wish you a wonderful and healthy rest of your day. And go, go Irish! Irish.